let's finish creating our arrow shooting mechanic. So in our assets, I have already mentioned in the prefabs folder, you should have this arrow parent game object. Let's double tap on it to open it as a prefab. And as you can see, the point of this is that the arrow parent has a pivot point at the head of the arrow, while the arrow itself has the pivot point at its end. This is why we need to have the arrow parent, and this arrow parent will have a rigid body. So let's select the add component on the arrow parent, let's type rigid body, and basically we are going to move this object using this pivot point at the uh, edge or at the tip of the arrow. Let's extend this rigid body. Now the rigid body, the mass of the arrow should be around 300 grams, so 0.3 of a kilogram, I think. Now uh, the another thing that we need to change is the collision detection. For our arrow to hit the targets with a precision, we need to change the collision detection from the discrete to be continuous dynamic. Now this might be a bit more performance intensive or performance heavy, but we want the collision detection to be a bit uh, more realistic for a VR project. That's why I'm changing this collision detection for the continuous dy dynamic mode. Now, if we take a look at the arrow itself, we are going to see that it has a child object of type trail. It should add a bit more visual effect to the arrow flying forward. Now you can explore it on your own. The arrow itself has a sphere collider, which is a small sphere at the tip of the arrow, as well as the box collider that we are going to use later on when we make the arrow stick to the object. And if the object is of type rigid body, this box collider will make sure that the object behaves differently because it has another collider attached to it. But we want to keep the box collider disabled. We only want the sphere collider to be colliding with targets that we are shooting at. Now, to make the arrow behave a bit more realistic or a bit more nicely when we shoot it, we want to make sure that the arrow tail follows the direction of the movement of the arrow parent, since it will not be immediately uh, so when we just add the rigid body. We want the arrow tail to follow along in the direction that the rigid body is moving. For this, we need to have a separate script. So let's go to our assets, scripts folder, right click, create a new c script. I'm going to call this arrow rotation. And let's open this script up. Okay, let me paste the code here. Now this is something that I have actually found on Unity forums. Now we are going to basically fake the realistic movement of the arrow, although I'm not quite sure if this is exactly how arrow flies. But what we are going to have here is a serialized, uh, serialized field, private rigid body, rigid body reference. And in the private void fixed update, we're going to set transform.forward direction of the arrow to be vector3.slurp. We are going to basically spherically interpolate between two vectors the current transform.forward vector and the rigid body.velocity.normalized vector. Now, since this is in fixed update, I should have used the as the third parameter, so as the float, so the time between this uh, transition, I'm going to use time dot fixed delta time. Now this is because we are working inside the fixed update, so there is no reason for using delta time. Basically, this will make the arrow tail uh, move and rotate together with how the rigid body is moving. Okay, let's save this. Let's go back to our project. We are right. Let's drag this arrow rotation onto the arrow parent. And basically this is it, we need to assign the rigid body, so the rigid body on this game object needs to be assigned to the arrow rotation script. Now we can exit the prefab mode of this arrow parent. We already have started working on the arrow controller script, now we need to make sure that it actually creates or instantiates the arrows and sends them flying forward in the direction where we are pointing using our bow. So let's open our arrow controller. Great. At the top, we have this private game object midpoint visual reference. I'm going to add two more, arrow prefab and the arrow spawn point. Now, arrow prefab will be the arrow parent that we have just modified, and the arrow spawn point will be a point where we are going to instantiate our, our arrows. Another thing that we need to have is a serious field private float arrow max speed, which is set to be 10. This will be used to calculate the velocity or the force with which we are going to shoot our projectile. Okay, 
Now the whole logic will be added to the release arrow method since this is the event where we let go of the string. So instead of debug.logging the strength, we're going to have this code. Game object arrow equals instantiate the arrow prefab. Now we are going to set the arrow transform position to be arrow spawn point transform position since we need to place the arrow somewhere. We also need to rotate it correctly. So arrow transform rotation will be the rotation of our midpoint visual transform rotations. Since as you recall, the forward direction of the midpoint visual is always pointing straight at where the bow is pointing. Next, we, are, we need to grab the rigid body reference RB equals arrow get component rigid body. Although we could have a separate script on the arrow that would add force to it. And we are going to call rigid body dot add force. And we need to use midpoint visual transform forward times the strength that we have passed in this uh, when we have called the unity event times the max speed. So this is zero to, uh, from zero to one times the max speed. And we need to use force mode dot impulse since this will add the maximum force at the start uh, and this frame where we release the arrow. So it will be flying forward in the direction where we are pointing our bow. Okay, and basically this is it for our arrow controller. So with this done, let's save the script and let's go back to Unity. Great. Now we need to select our bow and we need to select our component uh, of type arrow controller and here we need to assign the arrow prefab which obviously is our prefab's arrow parent let's assign it here but we also need to have the arrow spawn point so let's go to our bow and actually what we need to do is since this is a prefab we are going to select overrides and apply all and we are going to go to the prefab inside the hierarchy and here we can see if we enable the midpoint visual object that arrow itself has a spawn point or the uh, pivot at the end of the arrow, but our parent has this pivot point at the tip of the arrow. So we are going to select our midpoint visual object or even the arrow object, right click on this, create an empty object, and we are going to call it spawn point. And we are going to move it using the green arrow, so the X, Y axis to the uh, tip of the arrow. So this is where we are going to spawn our arrow parent uh, projectile. Now another important thing is that if we select our evil bow we're going to select the layers and this is on the layer bow. Let's click on it and let's say yes change children so the arrow the visualization of the arrow is on the bow layer as well. If we go back from this game object and if we select in projects in the prefabs the arrow parent you're going to see that it is on the layer arrow and it has a tag arrow. Now for now this is the most important part is that the layer is arrow. This is because we never want the arrow to be colliding with the bow because as you might imagine when we shoot our arrow it can immediately stick to the bow. That's why in the edit in the project settings I have set in the physics in the collision layer matrix the arrow layer will never collide with the bow layer and this will ensure that the arrows will never collide with the bow so they will never get stuck on the bow itself when we release the arrow okay so this is pretty important for our setup okay before we can test our uh, setup i think uh, in the rush of fixes of in the previous video i have removed from our midpoint grab object the collider so i'm going to add a box collider okay and i'm going to make it <laughs> i think a bit bigger okay so I'm going to just drag it a bit and this should be good enough. I need, I wanted to remove the cube mesh, but instead I have removed the box collider. Okay, now I think also I have enabled in the uh, bow evil. So I need to apply this to the prefab. In the bow evil, I have en enabled the midpoint visual object. I need to disable it. And now we are ready to test our setup. Let's just check if we have assigned everything. So I think in the arrow controller, we haven't assigned the spawn point. So let's go to the prefab and let's assign the spawn point. This will be the arrow spawn point that we have created. Now we should be able to test our game. So let's exit the prefab. Let's press play. Okay. If everything went well, we should be able to now pick up the bow and pull the string and let it go. And the arrow is bouncing around our scene. 
perfect. I mean, not perfect, but this is a start. Now, the arrow is behaving strangely, but as you can see, when we are shooting those arrows, it feels pretty good. Now, obviously, we have no sounds, which is a pretty annoying thing, but we are going to start working on the sounds as well as on making the arrows stick to the objects when they hit those objects in the next video. Okay, see you there.